They need water just as much as the birds do. So give them water. Give them a little shallow something, a couple of little stones in it. They come down like dragonflies. You need water for dragonflies. Same with all the other bugs. Hedges. This is a little, um, that's actually a rigosa rose. That's the, the wild dog rose hedge. Not mine, but I have one similar. Um, and you're interplanting flowers in amongst your vegetables. So that's important. True bugs. Um, there's a difference between... We, we, we use bugs generically, but there is a, quite a difference between bugs. And I can't read you the whole chapter in here, but there is a really good chapter in this book. This is Great Garden Companions by Sally Jean Cunningham, and it's produced by Rodale Press. Um, and she's, she's just great. She, she, does all sorts of, she gives you designs for um, helping you know, companion planting, gardening through the year. She tells you which of the weeds to leave in so that they're good and usable. Um, she's actually got some photographs of her own garden, which is nice because it, it looks like mine. It's slightly untidy, which is great. You know, then I feel better because my garden's never that tidy. Um, she talks about compost. She looks at the four fundamentals of companion gardening. I'm just trying to find... Ah, here we are. And she's got a whole yard, a chapter on... She likes entomology. She likes insects. And she's just... So her whole chapter five is actually on... It's about 40 pages, about that much. It's just on bugs and good bugs at that. So she has listed under the good guys and she tells you how to feed them and how to grow them and how to water them and whatever and you can actually buy beneficial insects um, George Scott has some of them not all of them but uh, fireflies how many, how many people have fireflies in their gardens yeah I have oh if ever you want to see a site come down our place in July the whole place is just absolutely alight with fireflies they're fantastic but they are actually very good for your garden. So if you can find somebody who's got any. Um, the adult fireflies don't actually feed. It's the larvae who eat all sorts of things. Um, what do they eat? Slugs, for one. So they're good. Okay, so ground beetles. Um, so we're looking at these, this, this black beetle here, who's actually... Um, a purple, no, he's a violet beetle. Um, and of course, you know the lady beetle. Lady beetles are wonderful, absolutely the silver bullet for aphids. So if ever you have aphids, go and find yourself some lady beetles. Uh, then we've got rove beetles, soldier beetles, tiger beetles, assassin bugs. I like this. Wow, sounds good, doesn't it? Um, assassin bugs frequent meadows, fields, and gardens. Watch for them in the hedgerows, perennials, or ground cover plantings. They've got rusty colored bundles of eggs, and they eat aphids, leafhoppers, flying insects. The only trouble is they do eat bees. Uh, asparagus beetle, if anybody's got that, and other beetle larvae, so they are really good. So um, the ambush bug, <laughs> like that too. This is this funny shape. Um, there's also another little bug like that that, if you pick it up, it actually emits a rather strange smell. Yeah. Um, ambush bugs will eat flies, day flying moths, and other bugs. Beekeepers, beware. Ambush bugs are not particularly nice to bees. This is the problem. Some of them will eat bees as well, so you have to be a little bit careful. Um, so, and then you've got the stink bugs. Uh, and they do smell. That's the guy who's got a, a more, an even more pronounced shield um, than this guy, he, he's got a, he's almost like a heraldic shield, you know the shields that you get with all the family crests on them. Mm -hmm. So he goes sort of like that, and then right like that. And how big do They're only about that big. They're normally, beneficial. yeah, they're beneficial. They're, they're normally uh, light green or li a sort of browny yellow. I have quite a lot of them. And then my favorites are the next lot. So. We've got beetles, bugs, and stinkers. Lots of different beetles. Um, it's difficult to tell which is a good beetle and a bad beetle because some of them look very similar to that black one there. But the, the violet one. Damsels, dragons, and lace wings. 
Damsel in distress. No, damselflies. Wonderful. Dragonflies. Damselflies and dragonflies look very similar. So a damselfly is just smaller and lighter. A, a dragonfly tends to be a bit more meaty. Uh, the dragonflies that we've got here are the blue ones, generally. Blue, green, and then there's a sort of non-brownish one. But the lace, they, they will come and sit on your shoulder if you're gardening. I've, I've got a big, big, big pond, so I have a lot of, of um, damsels and dragonflies. And they will eat their weight in mosquitoes every day. Thank you. Because oh. I've got mosquitoes, like, horrible. And the lacewing, there's a brown version of the, one, the little one at the bottom there. Um, and they are great as well. They, they just clean up lots and lots of things. Um, the one we don't get here that I'm used to is the old praying mantis, the guy who sits up and looks at you. Unfortunately, I don't think, I've not seen any here. Does anybody know that, whether we get praying mantis or not? I think they're further south. They don't really like the cold weather. But they are a, another silver bullet. Now, the hoverfly um, is like, he's the top one of the two there. And he will literally hover like a little um, hummingbird. Quite small, sort of like an ordinary small housefly, but he's got the black and yellow stripes. And you think, when you first see him, you think he's a thin-bodied bee. And he sounds like a bee. But he's actually, a, he's called a syrophid, for those of you who are technically inclined. Then you get the rubber flies that, and the tachinid fly. Now that looks like, that bottom one, um, you'll see that he's got spines out of his rear end. He's actually pretty powerful chappy, he is. Um, let's just have a look what he does. So robber flies are skinny flies. Um, again, they've only got one pair of wings, like most flies. Um, and uh, so the robber, let's go back to the robbers. The robbers are aggressive predators of all kinds of insects, including some of the beneficial ones. Yeah. Uh, grasshoppers, grasshoppers and wasps they will take on. And the larvae in the soil attack grubs, root maggots, and insect eggs. Aren't they lovely? Great guys. And so the tachinid fly, which is this one at the bottom here, um, they, there are a hundred and something number of them, and they're only half an inch long. They're, they're quite small. They are effective parasitoids of vegetable crop pests, including corn borer, corn earworm, imported cabbage worm, cabbage looper, cutworm, army worm, Colorado potato beetle, stink bug, squash bug, tarnished plant bug, and cucumber beetle. What a wow of a guy. It's just, <laughs> just trans if you have them. Eh? Yeah. yeah. But um, I've seen them around. They're, they're, they're definitely down my way. So the mantises, yes, we can't talk about mantises. And then we go to... You know, these, these are just sort of some of them. There are masses of them, but it's just to give you some idea. I'm sure you've all seen the crab spiders. Um, quite often when you go out, if you go to a U pick and you're picking strawberries or raspberries, you'll find these guys. They come in that sort of light whitey color and they come in a, a pale green as well. They're, they're small, they're tiny. Crab spider, orb, and wolf spider don't spin webs. The wolf spider is a, a predator that comes out from underneath plants. The orb spider is a nighttime spider. You won't see much of them. They're black and yellow, but they are all very good for, for catching nighttime beasties. And as for the wasps, you know those guys who build the big papery nests? Everybody thinks they're horrible. They're not. They're actually pretty good. So don't, don't go destroying their nests. You'll see that this guy, this is a chalcid one, the top one there. Um, he's actually laying, she is, laying eggs into that uh, caterpillar. And they hatch within three days. And that caterpillar will be a shell in half a day. Pretty horrible, but still, it works. And the guy down at the bottom is a tachinid wasp. Um, don't know why they're called tachinid wasps. Yeah, tachinid uh, flies and tachinid wasps, but it's probably a word meaning <coughs> that they attack something. I, I'm not quite sure where the, the um, etymology of that word comes from. But yeah. So there are aphid wasps, there are brachinid wasps, there are chalcid wasps, there are ichneumonid, ichneumonid wasps, all sorts of wasps. So don't wipe out wasps. They are actually pretty good predators. 
on a lot of the bad bugs. And your four-footed friends, when we're not talking about altogether mammalian. Bats. If you've got mosquitoes, bats. Bats, 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 bats. But the problem is we're losing all our bats because of this nose fungus disease, which is terrible. Lizards and salamanders. Toads and frogs. Good old American bufo. Burr. Oh. We start with the peepers. We've got this huge pond, and we've got about 15 of these guys, and they converse across the pond. And it echoes up against the house. Oh. Earmuffs we need. Uh, moles. Star-nosed mole. The only mole that we have here. All right, yes, I know moles can be a problem, but this guy is marvelous at cleaning out all sorts of problems. And dogs. Believe it or not, I take my dogs and we walk round the vegetable patch, especially when it's raccoon season, when it's corn season. We walk round every night before we go to bed. The raccoons smell the dog. And that's it. We don't, well, we occasionally have raccoons. So, yeah, so we've got some of those friends. And the other thing is snakes. Garter snakes will actually eat a lot of insects. So, I know a lot of people don't like snakes, but... Uh, they're good. They're good. Right. Back to some more attractive people. <laughs> <laughs> Top five of your winged friends. Chickadee. He's wonderful. He will pick up so many beetles and go off with them. Nighthawks. Yeah, and of course your woodpeckers. If ever you've got problems with uh, wood. Dong, 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 dong. <laughs> when we first got here, we had our dog that we bought with us from England. She was out at Dutch Kennels, which is out on Route 8. And there's this crazy woodpecker at Dutch Kennels. He's going for the electrical, big, you know, the big electrical transformer box. And he's going, dong, dong, dong. I looked at this and I said, crumbs. <laughs> Canadian woodpeckers are a bit different from English ones. <laughs> but, uh, yep. <laughs> that one was a bit different from everybody else. And nuthatches, the little guys who run down trees face first. Yeah, little you guy. know what we call them? Mm-hmm. Assops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, assops, that's a good one. Yeah. Little guy who's about that long, he's got a very short tail like a wren, um, very long, very thin beak, which is obviously your insectivorous beak. And uh, you can get a creamy colour one, with, well, creamy underneath and brown on top, or you can get uh, almost a sort of orangey russet one. And I've got both of them, they're wonderful. They're, they're the greatest guys and they're absolutely sweet. And then obviously all the native sparrows are very good for, for um, collecting whatever for their, their little nestlings. And your imports, in other words, your songbirds that are coming back, your vireos, your phoebes, and your swallows. And swallows, of course, will take everything on the wing. So it's great to have them around. Um, robins are back, grackles are back, kind of the geese are back. I drove in past um, the big field next door to pumpkin, country pumpkin this morning. 150, must have been geese. So, yeah, it was beautiful. It was great to see them back. And the uh, buffleheads and the merganza, you know, the white bodied, black headed ducks are back on the river. So that's absolutely super. And boy, the sound is suddenly ramping up. OK, so now leaving animals and bugs and whatever behind, companion planting. This is the other half of this talk tonight. Is it myth or is it real? I think there are a lot of urban legends about companion planting. Um, but as you'll see on that handout, there are quite a few plants that help each other. I wouldn't say they are necessarily 